what's up? Um, so, what's over here? Um, here, let me cut some lights on. I was over here counting millworms because, well, I wasn't really counting them. I was just pulling some out for my frogs. Um, I started out with five beetles. As you can see, like, four of them are here. There's, uh, three more now. Um, so I was picking on this other side, but you can see here just how many... I've got big, big ones in here. I think I'm gonna leave some of these larger, larger ones. Get beetles from those. There's tons of these little itty bitty ones. Uh, I mean, these things are all in here. Um, I don't know how many I have. I know that I put in um, a cup about this size of, um, or just a little over half of, of um, oatmeal. And daily, it's gone. So there's a, there's a large number of these things actually in here. Um, generally, I feed it to the bearded, who right now is sleeping. We can say hi to him. He won't mind. A little bit of light. See him sleeping. So he gets quite a few of these. Like, probably five a day. I don't know. Maybe five every other day. He does have his own food. Um, there are days that I wake up late for work. And therefore, I just run through, water everything. Um, I didn't work today. Can you see? But I didn't water. Didn't water. Crickets. They don't really need it. But my cricket numbers are low. And there's a reason for this. I have been feeding... Mm, I guess only about three of these a day. Um consistently to my new little critter who is sleeping and he's burrowed i don't know where he is actually it's probably right down here in fact he is right down there he's right in there and i'm not going to disturb him right now he is super friendly and I'm gonna keep it that way. Daily holding is gonna be the key with him. Um, take him out, I feed him every day. I mean, he's like this big. This big, he's like my finger. He sits on my finger, it's really cool. Um, so we'll keep that a secret right now. You gotta subscribe if you wanna see that shit. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously the snake video is a hit. Um, live feeding's frowned upon. I understand why, but let's be real. That is nature. Um, so yeah, so let's speak further into nature. Okay, so I used a sphagnum moss mixture in here and then I decided to put in dirt because, well, I was going to raise little, um, like the roly polies. I wanted to get the other softer bodied isopods. Um, I haven't found any of them yet. I know there's some at the beach. Um, quite a few of them on the rocks out there. Anyway, but those are bigger, um, and I probably will eventually go that route. So, I've been um, doing more research into the uh, grain mites. I don't know if you can see this, but you can definitely see that. So, there is a glare of what looks to be sand. You can see a thick patch right here. Those are grain mites. What I have been doing... Moisture is what they like thrive on. Um, so I've been taking vinegar and water mixture, not heavy. I mean, you can see, you can see my glass now. It's definitely getting a, um, the vinegar's eating it. It's making it rougher. It's not as smooth as it was. Anyway, so you see how thick that is? My glass was covered with this. They were coming out the top. They were congregating right here on the glass. And right here, which you can still see a few, there are some still alive. My numbers are nowhere near what they were. Um, I have found that I am getting crickets really quick in this container. Um, they they like the sand. Um, been the same. Here's the other thing. Um, my cricket numbers are low. Like, that's just because I bought the new freaking lizard. And I guess I got him Friday. What day did I get him? I'm not really sure what day I got him. 
Um, no, but it was Friday that I came in and my scorpion was walking around, but had its tail kind of like on the ground. It didn't look good to me. Um, so I pulled all the little stuff out of here. Not these, I just put all the crap in there. Um, I pulled the little stuff out of there. I felt like it needed um, a little more space because of the condition where she did fine all winter, had heat. I have a heat pad underneath. Anyway, she died. Came home after work and she's not alive. But very clearly you can see the spots. Um, I think if you look back to the Repticon video, you'll be able to see the little um, spots on it. Um, I may have spoke on it. I, um, I guess I deleted the video talking about the mites originally because I had those in here. Um, yeah, so here she is. Unfortunately, with the door closed, it actually reflects the light. Um, here, let me, on my phone, I, I was going to put a flashlight up here. And um, so you could actually see. Yeah, I've got all those secured. Um, I don't think, I believe this isn't going to work. So right in here, in this part of it, um, I mean, keep in mind, this has been a week now. I was hoping I could dry out the body. Um, you can still see there's still moisture in the soil. I know there's a glare, I'm sorry. Um, there's still moisture in the soil. I mean, she's got a burrow, an awesome little burrow that tucks up in there. The only difference was there was a log right here on top, and there was a rock over here. Um, I have crickets reproducing in this aquarium faster than any other. Even the dirt in there does not compare to how quick this reproduces crickets for me. Um, I guess there's only one right now. Um, <clears throat> I've still been putting crickets in here and the other day I used the tweezers and she took one. I don't know if she ate it. She went into her burrow, um, but she held it the whole time. Um, I also never physically witnessed her eating. Like I said, she pinched the cricket the other day, went into her burrow and I could not see if she ate it or not. And this happened before work. And this was like actually right after I got back from the Everglades. So th that was almost two weeks ago where, when that happened and I didn't think anything of it and maybe I should have, but either way, um, she did molt. She molted, um, a month ago and I kept that because that actually came out really clean. And you, I'll show you this right here. So I sprayed it with um, clear enamel shit. And so all the hairs and everything now have a little white um, thing to them. This, I was so happy that she did this. Was this a month? Yeah, I mean, it's got to be a month or just shy of it. Um... I was so happy when this happened. And like I said, I sprayed this thing. I did it for multiple days. Um, and I even tried to spray up inside and left it hanging like this to try to get it in the tail. I just, I wanted it secure and you can see. I mean, it's, it's there, but it's still really, really brittle. Uh, my collection of critters are from over the years. Just little things. I made that in kindergarten. Uh, anyway, and then other little tidbits of crap. I don't know why y'all care about that. You don't. Uh, snakes are actually out. Um, in fact, maybe I'll put that on video too. Um, I don't ever show video of the snakes. Like, I never show me holding them. I never show me feeding them. Like, I've put up a couple of fe feedings, but I don't really do that. Um, I bought the wrong mice. So I've been thawing these out. I'm going to give the lizard one too. He's actually sleeping. Um, and maybe I'll toss that on the end of this video. We'll see. Um, this though, I, you know, we don't spend 50 bucks that, of money we make working fast food type jobs to have our critters die. I mean, it's just, it's not what anyone does. Um... Yeah, 
Phoenix is awake now. <laughs> he's so, he's so nice. Okay, so he was given to me because a friend of mine has, uh, her kids. I like how friendly he is. He's so friendly. He thinks there's food. Um, dude, did you just find food? Did you? So, he is so chill. Um, I've actually, I went to work the other day and left this open. Um, came home after work and I was like, oh crap. Um, and then I did it earlier today when I was feeding him. I left the room and came back and actually the dog had his nose in there. And the lizard's like, what are you doing? So, he's super chill about it. He's not very violent. Like, I have not had issues with him being violent. Um, he's been really, I mean, I don't usually hand feed him. I normally take this stuff. And you saw how he walked over. I mean, he is now interested in whatever. Come on, bud. So, first day that I got this guy, he... Um, I picked him up and he just kind of thrashed like a gator would. He didn't want to be anything to do with people touching him. That's my finger. That's my finger. <laughs> See, he loves these things. Come here, bud. He doesn't see it yet. But, you see the way he gets interested in hands? It's exactly what you don't want with like your monitor, lizards, and stuff like that. This guy's smaller. If he bites my finger, what's he gonna do? We'll draw a little bit of blood? If that? I mean... It is what it is. He doesn't like his belly rubbed. Oh. Oh. Um. Anyway. He's very skittish. <laughs> I mean, he's not skittish, but he's just very... Yeah, he gets this way when there's food or uh, you know, worms. Um, anyway, this is pretty much all I do. I pet him all the time. I try to do the same for uh, for uh, Ziggy, um, my ornate monitor. Um, but he totally hates that shit. He wants nothing to do with anybody. Um, this little guy. Oh shit. Well, I kind of revealed a little bit of it. This little guy, um, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm keeping up with a daily interaction. I got him, like, new hatchling size. He had no fear. He just kind of licked me constantly, crawled up on my hand for a little bit. Um, I, I guess he crawled on my finger first and I took pictures and then I got him crawl on my hand, uh, because I thought that was really cool. Um, or vice versa. I guess there were two periods where I had him on my finger and took pictures. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, like I said, the mites or dry vinegar. Um, crickets. I order them by a thousand. I do pick up from that store. In fact, I just picked up wax worms today. And my new buddy got to try those. And he evidently loves them. I think he had like four of these little things. I don't know if he had any crickets today. I didn't move the water dish. I refilled it and didn't move it. Uh, I did move the rock, and I guess there were none under that. I guess there's a couple small ones. Like real small that don't really count. But I think I'm also going to stop feeding in that, um, in that container that he's in. I'm not sure what I want to do. I just see a lot of drawbacks, just like with snakes, um, of feeding in the environment. And lately I have been feeding my sand boas in the tank. Well, the tan has always been fed in here, but it's gotten to the point that you just barely touch her and she'll strike now. Um, that happened a couple days ago and I was like, what? Um, I mean, it's, it's happened more and more and more as I've been feeding and I'm also trying to... Um, I'm trying to pick up a, a few thing, a few feedings. Everybody does their animals, well, differently, but that's not where I'm going with this. I do a lot of pacing, sorry, I'm going in a dark hallway. Um, 
Everybody does their animals differently. A lot of people like to gut load their animals, have obese, fat, whatever. I kind of do that with my frogs, um, mainly because I want them to reproduce. I want them, they're native to Florida. I would like to be able to do, take tadpoles out and release them into the wild and repopulate with the barking tree frogs. It's something you don't even see in Jacksonville. And I think that's, you know, that's 50 years of kids, people in general, catching these things and whatever. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, I guess what I'm going to do, I guess I'm going to feed the frogs. That's what I got these out for. Um, Phoenix here, he can go back to bed. We'll turn his ladder back off. It's on an automatic timer. Um, just because that's a heat source on the winter it was easier to have it cut off on off on um, and cut on at night stuff like that um, eventually I'd like to put I've got tons of these LEDs these LED strips that I put together one but I'm having some issues um, getting I've tried the different um, oh, what's that shit Whatever. Um, I tried to use the stuff to help it uh, attach when I fucking uh, solder it. And um, a couple of those are, are giving me trouble. And it's the same thing I did over here with those lights. The same thing I did on my display tank. Um, I would like to get the strip lighting on both of these tanks. I think... I think something else is going in there. I'm just not positive yet. It's a big tank. Um, I don't want to also upgrade enclosures for anybody too quickly. Um, I guess I never, oh my gosh, I never filmed this guy. I literally haven't filmed this guy since I bought him. He's like a fucking horse. So, this is tank. If he wasn't tank, then my new friend would be Tank. But this is definitely Tank. He is just kind of fat. Like a little Tank. Pocket Tank. Oh, that sure is a name. Pocket Tank. PT. PT. Yeah, we can name it PT. Because I think I have a new T. <laughs> PT. That's his new official name, guys. PT. Pocket tank. He's so small. And he pees and he gets even smaller <laughs> every time I dig him out. Um, so let's do this. I don't really do mealworms for him, but I think I have? I don't know. I've had so many crickets. Like I said, I ordered them. And last time they were limiting orders, so I only got a thousand. I'm gonna just put that there. Nope. Here goes a meal arm. <laughs> well, that was a little bit clueless. What are you doing? What are you doing? Hey, buddy. Oh, I think he just got it. I think he just got it. He seems to be smart enough to take debris out. Evidently, they'll die. Okay, how small his belly is now. Oh, jeez. We're going to give him a couple more. Hey, can I have that? Can I have that stuff? Now well, I got a little bit of it. Here. Give me utensils for this. spits the rest out. So, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's give him more. Let's give him more. Yeah. That's the whole purpose of breeding these things. Because otherwise it gets kind of costly. Boop. Drop those in. I dropped one, so. And actually, it's really not costly. I mean, it's just keeping up with it. 
not been friendly with me like ever he always runs from me in the way now, bud. Whoa, he is really excited now. Wow. He actually normally is always tucked in. I guess I always try to hold him. I'm not sitting here holding a uh, recorder type thing. I drop that one. He um he'll be good. Um slide this back in. I've got it tilted ever so slightly. I've got the aquarium tilted ever so slightly to help water run to the other side. Um see where it stays dry. It hasn't really changed. The plants seem to be doing well, they seem to be growing. Um what is this, a rattlesnake plant? These are a uh, limelight. This, I believe is pothos, not philodendron. I believe I put the pothos in here. It actually seems to be doing well. Um, I think this is the philodendron, actually, back here. Um, hey, bud. Hey, bud. Come here. Come here. So clumsy. Anyway, you see him bulging in there. So that would happen. I've only seen that actually one other time. Um, I've given him like between five, five and seven, I guess. Not too many more crickets. Um, and that really, I guess, I guess I haven't been using the mealworms. I thought I have, but really, I've been buying them up until the point of having this. And I haven't been pulling from this for a while. I just ran out. Like, this count has ran out not too long ago. You see how much is left. Um, and that's all because of these. So we take... That one stays that way. That one can go here like that for now. Drop that. Just what I've been doing. Sorry about the juggling. Um, I just do this. And within just a few minutes, generally, they're coming out. Um, 
to eat it. I stirred up the soil pretty good too. I'm trying to get them out, so we'll see. They're probably not as comfortable right now. Um, so there is bearded dragon food. I use bearded dragon food. You notice there's not much powder. Not a big deal. Um, when there is more, I just put it in my cricket food. Um, the other part of the cricket food I use, the Flukers High Calcium. Um, I just picked this up at a local pet store. Even though I order crickets online, I don't generally um, pick this stuff up with it. Um, I just get this locally at the pet store. Um, let's see. Uh, I, the oatmeal is what I use most of. Stuff like this, I put probably like a one fifth ratio or maybe a one tenth like it's yeah I don't put that much um but it I mean it goes just as quick and generally I'll just pour it in that container and mix it all up also use these the uh, flukers orange cubes I'm not sponsored trust me um otherwise it'd be cheaper to do all this let's do that for a second so I just take a cube put it in different places um I do not use those as a water moisture source necessarily but more as a um another food i yeah just as another food and i don't use these very often um i use these like one cube every two weeks maybe something like that um so yeah, looks like it's about 81 in my house, right? Or this part of my house. I got the door closed over there. Um, and this looks like it's probably about 53 on the humidity. Um, in the daytime, it's more like 17. I think that hit the other day, or I saw the other day. Looks like 47 was the low today. We've been uh, overcast. I've been waiting for rain actually to go herping again. I'd like to find some more barking tree frogs. Um, and ultimately, I'm going to at some point have a population of barking tree frogs reproducing in my backyard. And I'll be able to just take them out of my pond, take tadpoles out, and release them in other areas of Florida, period. Um, I think that would be really fun. Just like the uh, squirrel tree frogs, I didn't take them very many places. Pretty much let them all go in my yard. Um, in fact, not pretty much. That's exactly what I did. Um, and the same thing with the spade toads. Um, we don't generally see spade toads in this area. Um, they're everywhere when you get just out of, out of the city. So, they're all in my backyard. Um, because the frog population coming up, we obviously are seeing more snakes. The two black racers stuck in the cast net. Um, I mean, I know they're going to eat the frogs. They probably like the lizards a hell of a lot more. And there's freaking rats in the neighborhood. Like, I just, I would like the snakes to stay in my yard. Just keep everybody, everything else away from the house. Um, Rebel will do that too. She'll flip a rat up in the air and then catch it. Like, she's, she's crazy. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, I guess I'm going to finish this video. You can see my half dead plants. These. You can see it's not dead. Uh, evidently that pot got really dry. Really, really. I mean, I think it's dead ish, but it's not dead. Like I said, it was 17 humidity the other day. Um, yeah. Everything was dry, but I mean these things, everything else is doing fine. Even some of these, and I've got this growing in here. Um, there's a mangrove. There's mangroves out of my aquarium out on the patio. This one right here kind of died back, but it's got a new stalk. It may die. 
Um, evidently, the mangroves really don't like being moved around. Um, yeah, they, they don't like being moved around. So I think what I'll do is I'll just clean everything up and I will pull these guys out. I'll get the tripod out. Oh, the tripod's right there. So I'll lower the tripod and I'll just feed the two snakes in here. I guess I'll sweep real quick, make sure all the little debris is off the floor. I mean, people talk about mites and shit. You walk outside, you walk in your house, you really think this fucking bullshit isn't gonna just latch on your animals if if it's there. Um, man, this is that drink that exploded in my car on the Everglades trip. It didn't explode. I dropped her off my fucking dashboard. Uh, I've got all of the GoPro too, and I know it was close, but I didn't notice it. Uh, yeah. So I'll do that. Set up, and you guys can watch these little itty bitty mice get kind of fed off i've got more Ugh, why did i do that bought multiple boxes of small feeder mice instead of the large feeder mice i like to keep extras you know i mean i've still got 30 pounds of fish the lizard only eats maybe 10 in a meal and that's if i've gone two or three days without feeding him like every day he eats Probably about just under that. I don't know. I never count them. I just dish them out. I see what his body size is, and I just dish out a whole bunch of food. Uh, the mice I don't do that with when I feed them. I definitely feed the lizard smaller mice than what he could handle, and partially because of I, I don't need him growing super huge. I can handle him. But I don't want a lizard that's just manageable. Um, we buy these things to to be able to interact. Um, and I have been working with him. Um, he fell the other day um, from the top of the cage. Actually, he was on the lights and he fell. And I let him run around the living room for about two hours. I was in there. Um, so he can't go anywhere. Most he could do is get in the hallway because I closed the door. He'd go under the door. Uh, what's he going to get behind my entertainment center and kind of burrow in? He's still in the house. Anyway, it's no big deal. Um, so I let him run around, and then I had to get him to put him in his cage. And he didn't like that. He did try to bite me at that point. But he didn't... It wasn't like he thrashed around. He he just kind of moved his head. I mean, he's got a... His freaking mouth is a bar. So there's certain things you can do to prevent him from biting you without having to do much at all um i've been watching videos of people talking about interacting or touching them and stuff um while he was trying to bite me i just started rubbing his mouth and he definitely didn't like that but after a few minutes it calmed down and so now i'm at the question of should i force hold he freaks out so much um, we actually have a negative day or two before he relaxes again after these inter interactions like that. Um, and I believe that if I was to step it up, that we could kind of get past that because he is not aggressive. He's just very defensive. Um, and even, uh, let me further that after he the other day try did calm down biting me his tongue started flickering he started tasting the air more started trying to figure out what was going on he was more relaxed it wasn't like he was freaking out at that point he uh yeah he was still freaking out at that point but he wasn't fighting he wasn't being more defensive he was realizing he wasn't getting hurt there was nothing harming him um and i think that was a good process I even, when I got him in the tank, I even kept petting him. Um, he did when I came out of the tank and then started doing again, started hissing, but he didn't freaking run off. Um, every once in a while, we were having that issue where he'll dart around the tank. Um, the water's his safe zone. He goes underwater. So a lot of the time, I'm now putting my hands in there, interacting, um, not directly with him, but I'm having my hand in the water till I feel like he's a little more relaxed, and then I'm starting to pet him. 
and let him lick my arm and stuff like that to figure out whatever it is he needs to figure out. Um, I don't know. Honestly, I thought it would be a hell of a lot easier. Um, I mean, I thought it would be quicker, not easier, not easier. Everything in regards to what it is that's going on was expected. Not hoped for, not sought after, but expected. Um, it's just unfortunately unfortunate that it's lasted this long. Um, I would love to have him two, three feet having his own room in the house instead of being in the living room with us constantly in that tank. I mean, I love him in the living room, don't get me wrong, but I think he'd be happier having his own room. Or actually what we're... What I've been talking to people about is I might be putting a cement slab, doing a rough chain link fence. He's too small for this as of right now, um, but getting a um, whole cage set up for him outside that um, he won't be able to get out of and one that's not going to just rot away in the next 20 years. You know, if I want... 30 years down the road another lizard in there i want the cage to last so i'm looking into what i need to do um i think wood is not the route i think um a dog style kennel chain link fence type with another in line um type mesh wiring that is smaller would be perfect and everything stuck into the cement slab that would be buried and have um i'm debating about walls that way i can bury it the only issue is water um standing location um next to the house stuff like that there's a lot of thoughts going on but i've got plenty of time to think about this um there's a lot going on um between relationship issues between making choices and in investments in life versus um, going on another Everglades trip. The Everglades almost happened a second time. I had the dogs. It was really an experience for me. Um, I had never been there before, but I expected more. I won. I didn't get out, out, out in the woods at all. I didn't do anything except for the same road herping that I do up here. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I just wanted more. Um, it is hard to do things. I would love to take radar out with me alone, but I can't leave either one of the dogs here at the house for an extended period of time that is too long. I mean, if you're working eight hour shift, that's one thing, eight hours. So. You coach your dog for eight hours. They grow up doing that for years. That's great. Let's say you're, let's say you make a trip playing for eight hours. Something happens. Um, let's say it's a 10 hour trip. Your dog's going to be fine. Not happy, but going to be fine. But what if there's an accident on the road and you were held up for another four hours, six hours, because it's a five hour trip. Um, let's say, let, who knows? Who knows? I'm just talking scenarios. But it's a, uh, it's a hindrance, but at the same time, I mean, we love our animals. Uh, dogs are kids. They aren't just animals. Um, I would love my lizard to be a kid. But he's not there. And I think it's things I did that I was unknowing about when, uh, right off the bat, that people really don't tell you. They don't talk about even when you're buying these things like there's certain things that owners learn that other people will not even know to ask because how do you know to ask what you don't know yet i mean obviously everybody is able to ask some questions but there's other questions there that you don't know what to ask and i think the major one for me was just like a bird, you keep them covered when transporting. You do not have them up 
admiring your critter while you're on a bumpy ass road you got freaking the road zipping by on the outside of the car and you got this lizard that is new fresh to the world seeing all this wondering what the fuck i mean really so i think that is ma majority of my issues um i've learned from those mistakes um, are there still mistakes I'm going to make? Sure. I mean, you, if you watched my uh, Everglades Rat Snake video, you, hear, you can see plenty of that in the comments. We've all made choices. Um, somebody gives me a native wild snake, and I'm most likely going to try to feed it things like a fucking frog. That's not unheard of. I love fucking frogs. And this is just asinine to play the, oh, it's, it's, could have uh, all the fucking excuses that get used. They're just excuses. It, it gets done. It happens out, I grew up watching it in my fucking back window as a little kid. I was fascinated while watching a fucking water moccasin consume a toad under the light of the back patio. Like, oh, wow. It's amazing. Rats, they're amazing. We love feeding live mice rats to our snakes does it have repercussions hell yeah and i'm talking store-bought versus i'm not talking the wild caught rats that i just wouldn't do i have i have i've made that choice before but there's other factors you need you need to consider rats go in houses there's fiberglass those factors are a little more drastic than picking up a parasite that can be take dealt with in some manner. Um, I guess if my snakes get parasites, I'm going to research how to deal with it and find different angles and opinions and stuff like that and form my own opinion. Um, Ask my own questions once I see a few, a little bit of information to give me more questions than just, what do I use? Or, yeah, hey, here's a good question. Coconut oil. How does coconut oil work on reptiles with parasites? I know how coconut oil works on a dog when you drench a dog, physically drench a dog in coconut oil. What happens to fleas, ticks, all these insects? Do they survive? Well, it's a question that with the dogs I can answer. Or reptiles? I can't quite answer that. Um, they also, I would not want oil on the face of a snake. More so something like this because a sand boa it's not adapted for the water type environment. In fact, I've never seen those two snakes crawl in the water. It's just not in them. It's not their, their cup of tea, let's call it. Whatever you wanna say. Anyway, um, I'm gonna speed this up. It's been 40 minutes just talking about these different critter things going on. Um, I guess I'll feed the sand boas. Give you guys a little bit of that. That'll make this definitely an hour. Maybe I'll put it on time lapse. I'll speed things up drastically. Um, in the meantime, let me show you the uh, moss tank. If you can actually see through. See, that's the problem. So I'm, after wiping it down, <clears throat> this is what I'm left with. So once again, I talk about this all the time. It's all wild collected except for a very few things. That gladiola. That gladiola. <laughs> and that is a um shit. My oh, mind's blanking. It's that red plant from my patio. I've been reproducing a quite a few um plants in here. And or not reproducing, excuse me, cloning. Just splicing them, putting them either up there or obviously right there. That was a little guy. 
and he seems to be doing really, really, really well. Um, I guess it's been six years since I started this. Um, it's starting to mold. I guess my microfauna population is dropped. It's also 80 degrees compared to the 60s, 70s it's been. Um, there's no rocks. And, I mean, there are big rocks, boulder type rocks for my setup. But there's no rocks down there. You can see some roots. Um, this right here. This is my part of this project. Um, you can see the algae start building up. But every time I saw any algae build up, say right there, right there, you see it, the tip of my finger on that rock. So it looks like lichen. That lichen will 100% grow me a fern. I will repeat this. That piece of lichen right there will 100% grow me a fern. Right. This has happened through my whole freaking tank. Except for the ferns that I've put in there. Those two. This guy. I, I put that plant in there. Whatever the hell that is. I don't know what that vine is. I thought it looked cool. Um, the... the, the this one came with that moss that just died evidently um that one started growing and I don't remember on that one so I'm not even gonna try <laughs> I originally wanted to write uh, we've got chalk and you write on this I wanted to write the names of all these in so I could learn them I'm not very good at that retaining names I'm just horrible with, with doing remembering Veronis, Stellatus, stuff like that that I'm interacting with every fucking day is easy. And now I have a new one, to, new name to learn. Um, the Barking Tree Frogs. Hyla something. <laughs> Barkiola? No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, I, like I said, I, I don't know. Um, so... I'm bad with that. I've always had trouble retaining some types of information. And unless I'm reciting those every day rather than their common names, it, it's just not going to stick for me. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here. I'm going to get this set up for feeding the two sandals. Any questions? Throw them in here. Obviously, um, there's something I've said that will have somebody's mind ticking. Um, whatever you may think. Question. Make me think. Make me question myself. I mean, that... I wish everybody understood that. It would definitely make a relationship easier. Um or lack of uh, that you would rather it work out and we go back to the way things were eh, I'll just stop there <laughs> life alright let's feed these guys alright oh shit well I guess I want to rearrange this completely let them out <clears throat> so they're out I'm gonna separate them to feed them. Um, and I guess I'm also gonna put this on time lapse. So you see how long they are? My arm is. We can measure that later. I think she, I think the orange one, is pushing like 22 inches or some shit, or 24 right at. And I think the other one was right at 18. But now they are really uh, starting to look the same in length, but not size, not girth. Um, I guess I, I would really like to change that, but I highly doubt that ever will, considering this is, you know, what it is. Alright. 
Let's do this. Let me put her down first. In fact, let's do it like this. But they know. They definitely uh, smell this shit. They're acting different just right now. Okay, now I touched the bags. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna feed Tan one first, I guess. That's why she strikes with these. Anyway, it should be just a second when she latches on that. Okay, I'm right, she didn't just touch it. Anyway, so she latches on that. I'm getting this other one. Quick and easy. So I said I was going to time lapse it. I'll adjust it and set it. So we got her back in here. Um, if you watch the end of that clip of the slow-mo, right at the last second, she would have bit me if I didn't have the tongs there. Um, I'll be honest, sometimes I use a sock over my hand just because I'll just reach in there and grab her and then she'll bite me. But lately I've been using tongs. I've been using different devices because, you know, I mean, while it is um, kind of exciting, it's not fun. It does get your heart rate up a little bit, but really, um, I mean, that's the enjoyment with these animals. There is some level of, um, human reaction, um, natural human reaction to it. Uh, I don't care what people say. Um, and that's part of the enjoyment. I feel like if I'm going to get bit, it is going to be my own because I'm more, um, a little looser with them, um, versus... <clears throat> Uh, a wild one that I'm not going to let bite me. Uh, so yeah, there's some things I've done to minimize being bit and they just kind of adjust to it. Like if I grabbed her right now, she's still pretty adjusted to feeding in here. The other one, not so much. Uh, as long as I don't reach down on her, its head, if I reach down on its head, it kind of comes out. But if I pick the body up, grab it, this one, I touch the body. It that's pretty slow, but it always comes up looking for food. Always. Um, I used to stick my hand in here and let it sniff me and shit like that, but <clears throat> that changed. So basically, we started talking about the mites in the beginning, the mealworm population that I never did go feed my bearded uh bearded. Barking tree frogs. Instead, I gave y'all a video of the sand boas eating just a small mouse. Um, I think you guys will enjoy that a little more. Um, but I will. In time, I'll upload a uh, better video of the frogs. Um, the barking tree frogs, that is. Because um, I'm an idiot. I recorded a hell of a lot more in time lapse. So, I don't know what I said. It doesn't matter. I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. 
I'm gonna take care of Ziggy, Ziggy's moody self without the camera. Um, when he starts behaving a little bit better, I mean, I really should share that with y'all, but I'm gonna cut this video here. Um, chat with you guys later. Hope you enjoyed. You got to see the unfortunate side. Again, you know, look back at my Repticon video, the very end of that. Um, in fact, you can probably look at it when we're in the store or in, I should look back at it, but I probably won't. There's enough with up editing three hours of Everglades. Um, well, it's much longer than three hours. <clears throat> There's a cricket, big cricket. I want to get that out and I want that in my breeder tank. Actually, I can start to smell scorpion. I mean, it's been a week. But anyway, look back at the video. I've tried to say this multiple times and I just keep going on about other things. Um, damn. Oh. Yeah. Oh, are you joking? Where the fuck did he go? He bounced off my damn bottle. Shit. He didn't go in there. Well, darn. So much for that idea. <laughs> oh. Anyway, I'm gonna go deal with Ziggy. Poor guy. Wish he would just be my friend. Um. Look back at the Repticon video from 2020. Yeah, it wasn't. This is 2021. What the fuck? Um, look back at the video, and I think you'll be able to see the, the white spotting that I was discussing. Hard to see right now. So it's in the back. Those spots were there if, uh, when I bought it. They weren't, I think it's dark, <clears throat> but it definitely, it's, I, it's the only reference of it I think I have. So I think if I ever buy a scorpion again, it's going to be much, much smaller. I may just keep this tank empty for now. I may keep uh, the plants, the little mite population, the little, just a little different things that are in here. They clean up. I may just leave it because they eat the crickets. They're going to eventually eat that thing's body. I might take it out. I'm going to spray it. Um, showed you all my spray of the other one. Um, of the carcass, that is. Not the, um, or the exoskeleton, not the carcass. This carcass. Um, <laughs> it does suck. It does suck. But it's, I mean, shit happens. I don't know how old it was. It was definitely full grown, very fat. Um, I was looking to try to get babies out of it. Very fat. I mean, shit. People would buy those in a heartbeat for 10 bucks a pop and get rid of them real quick. But I also get to watch them grow up and enjoy feeding them, stuff like that. Different, just different little things uh, and enjoyment in life. I mean,. What else do we got? Me, the two kids, and uh, the critters. Uh, fish don't count. They're just fish. I mean, they do count to some regard. You gotta feed them. But when you put them outside, nature does its course. I don't know. Um, yeah, you guys have a wonderful evening. I'll get that Everglades video up soon, and, uh, yeah. What's up? If you got this far, um, I'm gonna throw some bonus content on here, just a little tidbit. Um, if you probably, if you watched the beginning, you probably watched most of it, listening and talking about all the animals, showing the different things in the room. Um, but I, I, as, when I was uploading the movie, or the clips, uh, I realized that I had a time lapse on the GoPro already. So I'm going to throw that on the end of this. It will show you literally the thousands um, 
of mites, grain mites that I had uh, a couple weeks ago. And it, it's just amazing. It just looks like fuzz walking. You can see a few of them defined because they're larger. But um, it's definitely uh, something to check out. And I hope you made it this far. Um, like, subscribe. Uh, viewers will get more content on here definitely because, I mean, let's be real. Unless you got to work to support your ha your lifestyle, your different habits, um, the easier it is to uh, do more things, record, edit, because you know you got to edit some. Um, you can't just upload everything. I mean, you can. I try to, but we'll get there. Um, yeah. So next five minutes is a time lapse over whatever time ago pro battery lasted it pretty much died during the time lapse actually it did um i'm not gonna throw music on you can play one of your youtube videos here on youtube support youtube more play a video in the background you won't even have to mute this i believe well this part anyway enjoy and um again i'll have that everglades video up very soon i did have to watch and edit things out of that um people i was talking to and forgot to turn off the gopro stuff like that has to be edited out because um there were very few people that i you know informed of what i was doing and um i also told everyone that i had forgotten that it was still wrong that i would delete them out of it um, so, hope you guys enjoyed, and enjoy this.